What, what wine are you opening for us first? We are opening our sparkling Lacrima Christi Dore from the harvest of 2016. This wine is obtained by the typical blend of Lacrima Christi White, 90% Capretone grape and 10% of Falangina. So there are two local white grape varieties. This is a really interesting white wine, sparkling, so sfumante, obtained by Long Charmat method. So it means that the fermentation takes place in steel and not in a bottle, like the classic French champagne, but for a very long time, eight months in steel tanks, and then one year in a bottle. So, so many times. <laughs> The first today. So, first of all, I want to give you some information about the name of this uh, wine that is uh, Doré. Doré is uh, a Napolitan uh, expression that means the wine of the king. Doré, the wine of the king. Why? Because Bosco Tre Case, so the place where we are, was an old wound of uh, the king that was in Naples, Roberto d'Algio, where they, they and him, of course, came here to catch the animals because it was a really famous place. And this was part of its kingdom. And so the wine of the king by this uh, characteristic because the vineyards are located in this uh, place. So it's a really fresh white wine, sparkling, young, 2016. It's a brut, so it's dry. Small bubbles. Fine bubbles, yes. Not really carbonic. <coughs> Not really carbonic, but so not really aggressive, but very pleasant. We suggest this wine to combine uh, uh, even with the starter, so from starter until dessert, because it's a really uh, complete uh, white wine, so it's no sweet, no really extra root, so it's uh, in the middle. It's really mineral as well, because it's uh, not heavy about the taste. So this would be a very good food wine. Yeah. I was going to say the same, so I'm so proud of that. <laughs> I was saying the same, meaning, maybe, maybe, let's, let's just say in a unpolite way, we become, I become unpolite, I. <laughs> but it is not an aperitif wine. <laughs> no. It is a wine to pair with the food, as yes, you exactly. say. Exactly. And exactly, I agree with you, and uh, I can uh, imagine here, Paola, also some of our fat, fresh cheese. Fior di latte, yeah, mozzarella, of course, of course. Eh? because it is a strong enough to clean. No? Exactly. It is a strong enough to clean. Exactly. So. Lovely. It's, uh, mm -hmm. And it's, uh, I would say, it's not typical. It has a, an entirely different flavor and uh, aroma profile. Very pleasant. And uh, I agree with what you say about going with uh, cheeses, uh, particularly uh, like a ricotta, uh, yes, exactly. mozzarella, burrata. Burrata is in the burrata here. Uh, yeah, it is very difficult to find a good combination with this kind of food because sure. you know, it's very hard to find something. But so we, we are really proud of this uh, product, first of all, because it's a really unique experiment made 100% here on Vesuvio. So uh, we have our um, machine and take, so we follow all the process from the grape until the bottle. So, and we are very proud of it. And it justifies your pride, I think. <laughs> Okay. Mm. Very nice. Uh, what do you think, Mary? It's really nice. Yeah. But so let's take uh, some food. Sure. 
Please help Please. yourself. <laughs> I'll wait. I'll wait. Wait? Can I do that? Or? Yes, you can okay. do that. Okay. Yeah. okay, so now you can try our bruschetta piece with the fresh uh, eggplant marinated by our uh, vineyard and the, the Tomato. tomatoes on top. Which of we don't them. tomato, Paola. Sorry? Which uh, tomato? Which are? It's a pienolo tomato. Oh, okay. you have pienolo to tomato. On top of this uh, bruschetta, we already poured our extra virgin olive oil on top. I wanted to use uh, um, a lesson that I learned from an American friend. A, a, a so nice American friend asked me, but how possible that your way to describe, to give a label to a food, never enough one word. <laughs> because, uh, now I ask the power, which breed of tomato. For us it's very important. You can't say it is bruschetta with tomato. So, tomato. We have dozens of tomatoes. So, which tomato? Then she replied to me, it is one of the most, uh, um, how to say, important uh, tomato, that is a Piennolo del Vesuvio. Why Vesuvio? Because here we are. Piennolo, to mean, it is uh, here, the whole winter, and uh, every day, every day, it loses uh, water, and so improves uh, the richness of the right. flower. So, the, the more it stays under the roof, the ceiling of the farm, so the best it becomes. So you can see Pienolo here, so just to um, so. imagine how it is. And also eggplants from this room. I love it. I love it. So look, it's like a big grape, a big ah. cluster, where you can find all the tomatoes together and we leave them for the winter and so even in the winter that is not the season of tomatoes you can try a fresh product a fresh tomato from the land that is really unusual for the other varieties well and when so the reason, i'll be the judge of that <laughs> <laughs> enjoy when there is the great dinner the christmas eve the 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 challenge is that uh, we need the tomato, but we need the last meal, not the day before. So we go grab and use immediately in the dish. Delicious. Mm -hmm. Did you eat the answer? I mean, the link went? Oh, I'm going to. <laughs> they are marinated eggplants, so the one that we grow between the vineyard during the summer. So part we, of course, use for our daily life. So, and part we used to marinate for the winter to have, of course, another fresh product. <laughs> Tastes like her father's eggplant. Oh, really? Yeah, oh. really. My father. Mm -hmm. Oh, so it's a great the best memory. Ones, huh? From his family. Okay. Oh, okay. So, so you have Italian. Do you mind? Napolitan roots. Mostly now. I'm going to try that and with the. And, uh, and a little Sicilian. Good, good. So it's a typical uh, tradition. So yeah. to make the food for the winter, uh, starting from the fresh uh, product. Thank you. Good Which so is the driver? Did you really enjoy the, hmm? this first? Which is the driver? Uh, You're the driver. No, I can't. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I asked. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> I do not love eggplant, mm. okay? But I loved her father's eggplant. Mm -hmm. Mary's mm -hmm. father's eggplant. And this tastes just like it. Just absolutely like it. A little more garlic for you. Sure. More garlic? Mm. <laughs> he was crazy about garlic, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> mm. Delicious. So remember that our wines are all organic, so organic certified, it is really important to know. Mm. 
So we want that uh, after testing our wines, you can feel our soil. That is really important for us because we have to identify the view, the, the view or the value of the terroir. So we are just uh, translators of, the, of this area. So we don't, do, we don't make nothing more without our competencies. So, uh, so you, uh, you take what nature gives you Correct. and you apply your touch to it. Exactly, okay. exactly. So in fact, so I'm going to, dis the, to describe a label of the last red in this way, because so all our wines, they uh, belong to a different uh, um, kind of production, because our vineyard being uh, located between the 300 meters until 600 meters, the composition of the soil going to the top is different. And it's different even our production and our selection of grapes. And so we here we have taken three different wines that belong to um, different um, kind of production. The sparkling is a sparkling. Capretone, that is the next wine, belongs to our classic line of production. So the vineyard located between um, 350 meters until 450. And then our Frupa, that is a selection of Petit Rosso, located on 600 meters. You see, we have three different labels for different uh, kind of production. And in each there is a different expression of our philosophy of winemaking. So the next wine is our Caprettone. Caprettone is a classic white grape variety from Vesuvio, mostly from Vesuvio, respect to the other areas of our region. is a DOC wine, organic, dedicated to my grandmother, Benita. Benita, 31. 31 is the year when she was born. And the acre that we have seen is her first heritage. So for that reason, we are particularly uh, proud of this uh, white wine that we dedicated to her. Harvest 2017, so it's really young, in fact, so the last harvest is uh, this one. Even because just for the harvest of last year, we can use this name Capretone on our label because it was not recognized like a grape variety from the area. It was confused uh, with the Coda di Volpe, that is another white grape variety, more cultivated in the rest of Campania, less here on Vesuvio. But some bureaucracy about this uh, name of the grape. Uh, we uh, just last harvest we can use this grape. We can use the name of this grape, mm. Capretone, because it was confused with the other uh, white grape variety still cultivated even in this area, but is not particularly from Vesuvio, from, more from Campania region. Especially in Pina, you can say. Exactly, especially in Spina. So here's to Nona. To my grandmother. Exactly. Benita. Benita. No, can no, you imagine Benita. why Benita? Why Benita? Uh, because uh, when we were under the fascism, fascism, the name of Mussolini was Benito. So if you gave your son or your daughter the uh, name Benita, especially Benito, especially if, if it was the tenth son, one, two, three, four, the tenth son, you receive money. You receive a one shot of money. Yes. Lo sapevi questo? No? Sì, no, lo sapevi. Il decimo era chiamato Benito. Ma era maschio però. Era sì, maschio. perché evidentemente mh, il tuo bisnonno ci teneva a prescindere. Ci teneva a prescindere. Eh, non era Benito. I went ahead and uh, took a piece of this cheese. Mm. What cheese is that? Uh, this is a fresh cheese, it's a provolone cheese. That's a provolone cheese. From, from cow. The, uh, exactly, from cow and from the National Park of Milky Mountain. You can try it with a little bit of our jam from uh, plums. You can try even a very little sure. uh, combination with, uh, with, uh, with the cheese. Mm. Mm. 
I want to say even about the Capretone, it's nice, no? Because the, as, as Paolo said, the alternate name is Coda di Volpe. If we translate Coda di Volpe, is the tail of the fox. Mm. So look uh, how many, because now we found only two, but there are many, many, many in Italy, name of grapes uh, whose root is, uh, uh, is uh, something that is uh, linked to animals. No? So, Pere e Palum, no? Sense, yeah. Ah, yes. yeah. Yeah. So, only here we saw the tube, no? Please, please, please. The wine is so soft. This is really soft, yeah. yes. Even if it's really young as well. And the provolone with a touch of the... Uh, this plum is gem. Plum gem. Plum, okay. <laughs> This is a very good uh, white wine to combine even with an aperitif for words with, with a starter, with a, um, yeah, fresh cheese, because it's, so, it's a very long in the mouth, but it's a good alcohol content, it's 12.5, so it's not really light, like of course so the, the color. But, Only no blend, cut it too. So 100%. 100%. Mm. Very good. You could drink too much of this. Exactly. So, do you remember that uh, I told you that the minerality of our wines is uh, really uh, evident when you drink it. So you are never tired to drink our wines. Your mouth never needs water to be clean. Not sure. Because it's more salivation. So wine and more salivation. This is a typical characteristic of our wines. And these are characteristics that you can identify when you want to recognize the kind of wine that you are drinking. So the Vesuvio is really important. The added value. <laughs> yeah. That is the added value of the zoo. Yes, I agree. Uh, do you have uh, much of an international market or is it mostly good Um Our market, yeah, international and uh, national, yes. So the most part of our production is for um, export. Uh, and so the rest be divided between the national market and the regional market. How much is export, the share, the slice? The percentage of export is uh, more than uh, 60%. My God, mm, mm. It is the way not to, to survive, to grow. Yes. Because if yeah. you, your, your core business is a domestic market, if you are lucky, you survive. But you make exactly. no profit. <laughs> if you are lucky, you survive. Because you make no money to make investment. Right. Because you have to work twice. One to sell and one to lock at the door and make money. The truth. I'm sorry, eh? I don't like to say that, but it is but the truth. Sure. My God, sure. it is the truth. So. <laughs> but this is even the reason that, so, for example, our uh, foreign customers, they used to drink our wines in a foreign restaurant, for example, where they live, sure. and they are so interested about even uh, our wines, so to, to know about our winery, and they even come to visit us. Do you see? And so, see foreign? the most uh, part of our yeah. customers, they come so, um, especially to, to visit us and to drink our wines. So, for example, if they are planning a visit to Italy, they try to include the visit even at uh, our wine because they tried our wines. Is uh, one country a particularly big user <coughs> or consumer of your wine? Or is, like in the United States? Uh, in the United States, yes, it's a big market uh, for us, uh, especially for the people that come to visit us. So mostly of them, they are uh, United States, so and, Americans. And who is your import distributor? Uh, we have uh, different distributors, but our chain of distribution is uh, only for restaurants, one bar and hotels. So ah, it's okay. not for no shelves. No, no, exactly. no, no big uh, chain uh, supermarket or mm -hmm. big store or something. 
but we have a, a good um, solution about the, the shipment, so we ship the wine to their address. B2C. Ah, okay. okay, direct. Even, okay. even. So okay. we have both, that, both chains. Yeah, this is a food truck. The food truck to save the profit <coughs> is a B2C. Absolutely. If you, make a, if you want to make a profit. Yeah. You want to, to make it coming? <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. that way is the profit. You cannot, <laughs> you cannot okay. the middle I agree completely with you. Uh, can you make an aim to, amongst USA, the, the, the share of the single state? Uh, in other words... It's too hard to say. Okay. It's too hard to say. Too hard to say. Too hard to say because of Peter will be there in the news or because you don't know? <laughs> oh, no, because so it's, um, it's no... Uh, we have no big market located just in one state. Oh. So it's, uh, it's oh, okay. distributed so, in, the, in several so, states. And is a Florida one on this? Yes, of course. Yes. Yeah, Florida yeah. is now the second largest wine consumer in the United States. New York first, Florida second, and you know California is third. The second. Oh, yeah. and you it's know the quite wine kingdom of the United States, California. I know, but we consume more wine in Florida. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <Okay. laughs> because, uh, Paula, something that is very interesting, you have to understand that the Florida is what was for us Rimini until the 30 years ago. Okay. Meaning, everyone who goes there, mm -hmm. you have to go to spend a vacation there. Uh, the, uh, uh, do you agree with what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, no, because I know Florida is so and so. So, of course, uh, it is a big market. Because in winter, uh, Alpha America is spending there at least three nights. <laughs> and South America. And, and the South, South America, America for Brazil. Brazil. And the South America. Venezuela, Argentina. Oh my God. What Chile. Scale? The uh, tourists we have is uh, Colombia. What scares me is uh, in the retail, in the mall, uh, the label, the tags. American, Spanish. Oh my God. Why? Because yeah, it's bilingue. It's a bilingue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. tags. Yeah. Oh my God. So I hope someday also Italian because I go there. <laughs> <laughs> the wife is lovely. Thank you. Lovely. Yeah. Like Allora, let's make a joke because here yeah, for us it's a lovely meeting, you know, it is a, a pleasure. It certainly is. Okay, so let's make this joke. This joke. You must, otherwise, boom, I shoot you. You must decide between the two whites which is aperitif, which is not. I say that the second one is aperitif. I, I agree. <laughs> it is I not. Agree. Yeah. So the second one is aperitif, the first one is uh, full food. In Florida, we would say the second one is a wine to have by the pool. Correct, not in the glass, or, or in the plastic. The, no, <laughs> no. Or on the beach. And the Pala, learn this lesson. The, 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 the label he gave to the Capretone, the wine on the pool. The wine not in vino in uh, piscina. Mm -hmm. Meaning it's, you it's talk and pool. drink. Yeah. You it's swing and drink. You, 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 put the you become a and on. drink. And you sit down, you stretch out, you get a good book, which you never look at. And <laughs> you pick up a glass of... Uh, Capretone. 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 That yeah. Capra is good. No, it's the, 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 the animal that you make a cheese, no? Good. Yes. Right. Capra. Capretone yeah. means so big. So big. <laughs> Però questa libro lo tieni te la perché è molto bella. Cioè prendi la molto pulita. Il vino da bere in piscina. Che per loro è un complimento perché in piscina ti stai rilassando. It's a beautiful color. I don't know whether you can non really see it. La piscina è un vino da bere. No, è esatto posto. Sì, sì, una certa selezione. Perché benissimo. Tell us about the red. This red has an amazing nose. The uh, next red is our frupa. It is a selection of piedi rosso. Do you remember about the pigeon leg grape? The leg of the bird. 100%. 100% the vineyard uh, cultivated on 600 meters above the sea level. So where the composition of the soil uh, is a big lava stone. So it's really, really hard to cultivate. The grandfather is Vesuvio. Ah, yeah. ah yeah. of course, otherwise you can't have this exactly. grape, this yeah. flavor. No, no, 
Il... Nono Vesuvio. 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 Nono Vesuvio.
think Lamb, veal. Lamb, but not in the oven. Lamb with the tomato, not in the oven. Mm. Not so dry. Mm-hmm. But uh, may I break the rules? I break the rules. Here also, with the impepata di cozza. Mussels with the black pepper. And the tomato. Mm-hmm. Oh my. Perfect. No, really. Yeah, so this is, oh yeah, oh, I um, agree with you, especially because of Pidi Rosso, uh, even in uh, um, other people, they say that it's good to combine with the fish, that in general, the red wine is never combined with the fish in, a, in a general imaginary, so. I combine red wine with fish all the time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Particularly with mussels. Mm-hmm. Yes. Most particularly with mussels. This, yes. this is lovely. Great red one. Great curious. Goes elegant, but not, no, not a chivetuova, not a big one. And this is the first time I've ever tasted this grape. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And it won't be the last. Good. <laughs> because I'm gonna pour it just a little bit more. Thank you. Good. You like Mary? Yeah, I like you? it. I'm fine though. More than you mean? Mm-hmm. So you'd like. No. Maria? Yeah. Thank you so much for hosting us at your winery. Thank you to you. Coming here. And uh, Vincenzo, thank you for thank your you comments. Thank you, Vincenzo, of course. <laughs> That's so, We will be spending the next few days with Vincenzo visiting a few other wineries. Four. Oh, four. Four. <laughs> so, so but we're wait. looking forward to continuing the program. Of thank course. you again so much. So, I'm, I'm waiting for a lot of visitors from Florida. I just